Good morning, everybody, and welcome back. Today we have uh, Africa Month in sharp focus, building Africa and building a better world uh, through arts and culture and heritage. And we have an esteemed panel of guests that are helping us with this conversation, but we very much want you to be part of it as well. At Morning Life SABC is our Twitter handle, hashtag TNA Biz Brief. We also have an audience here uh, in this Woodmead uh, uh, um, location that will be asking questions as well, joining you at home. And uh, just before the break, uh, we heard Professor Shoinka asking us to interrogate some of the things that we hold dear. And uh, culture is one of those things that we hold dear, but sometimes some of those cultural things need to be interrogated. And patriarchy keeps coming up quite a bit. And uh, I'm going to ask Deputy Minister Rejoice Mabudafasi, who's managed, despite all of this patriarchy, to rise to great heights. But this is something that we need to look at. Not just patriarchy, but a lot of the cultural uh, issues that have served their purpose, perhaps, and maybe need to be re-looked at as we go forward? Yes. Uh, actually, that is why we have got programs that we say we must start with the young ones, mm. that uh, you know we run programs at schools, uh, what we have now, the, the national identity, the passport of patriotism. Mm. It starts there. That Children grew up loving their country by identifying themselves with the country. That the, the passport that has got our national flag, which is very visible. And uh, it's not just the flag, but they should know the history of that flag. They should understand it. The, 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 our national anthem. But we don't only sing our national anthem, but also the African Union anthem. They should know as rightfully said, a person says, no, I'm going to Africa. When you are in Africa, yeah. yourself, yeah. as the minister said so. Yeah. So all those, they build a child to love the country and also mm. to be part of building the country by being proud. We run those programs that are there uh, and also mm. we engage the youth. We have got the youth that is unemployed mm. who have, can be good ambassadors, for instance. The young ones, the unemployed youth who came to us and said, we've got skills. We mm. are visual artists, we are crafters, we are that. how do we engage them? That they're able to talk to, to the youth and the youth usually mm. listens to them because they are of their age, they share their experiences. So mm. what we do, we've developed programs to uh, employ those youth, not employ a child, give them work to do. For instance, that passport of patriotism just got all those uh, nice identities, animals and all. Now they said, because we, are, we can do visual art, we can put them up on the schools. They've already started mm. uh, in Limpopo. I think I saw some of them there amongst us here. You know, it, that education, when it comes from uh, the young ones, they, they see, they take it very serious. We also have got crafters, young ones who are crafters, because people just thought that uh, crafts is just for the old people. That is why we are now introducing us and culture mm. in schools. It's very important. And it, do, it doesn't just bring them back to the, the culture only, but also for the economic uh, value mm. of that. Okay. Um, Professor Motoso, uh, this word identity has come up quite a bit. And I'm just wondering if we even clear what it is to be African. Um, in some parts of the continent, when you say African, we actually mean you're black. We don't mean that you're from the continent. And I'm just wondering, Europeans are struggling with this whole uh, pan-continental identity. Um, are we clear on the continent what it means to be African? No. OK, good answer. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, you, you know, you, you arrive in Cairo, uh, you're an Arab. You arrive in Dakar, you're a French person. You arrive in uh, Mozambique, you're Portuguese. You arrive in South Africa, you're Misharifi, as you say in Cairo. I don't know what. We, <laughs> I, don't, I, I think we need to speak to ourselves in our languages. Our languages define us. And if we ask our languages, our languages will tell us why we're African. I uh, give the example of arriving in Aleppo 
and getting out of the taxi and being surrounded by kids calling me Yabid, slave. You arrive in some quarters in Paris, you are called Neg. You arrive, you know. But if we speak our languages and our languages speak to us, our languages don't den denigrate us. Yoruba only so ni me. My language does not call me slave. So if we are going to add, um, define and identify ourselves, we need to go back to our languages. Okay. Simpio Dana, and I'm going to come to you as well for this languages. He's saying that uh, we must use our languages. But haven't our languages contributed to perhaps even distancing each other? You know, you'll hear a, a Yoruba man saying, I won't marry an Igbo woman, or a, a vendor man saying, beware of Kosa women, they'll take your money. <laughs> <laughs> so, so haven't these languages sometimes help split us? <laughs> um, <laughs> I, I, I never looked at it the way you just said. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, I do believe that the only way really, truly, we can get to understand who we are as, as Africans is, as Professor said, through our languages. We need to speak them. But um, we, we, my main point and my main activism mm. when it comes to languages is that we need a unifying language. That a language of itself is not so important. Mm. It, it's important what we do with it. So um, I'm not too sold on the idea of keeping a purity of Kosa or a purity yeah. of Isizulu or, or, you know, my people must speak Isikosa because we are Kosas and Amazulu must speak Isizulu because they are Zulu. I'm, I'm, I'm not too sold on that idea. For me, the, the most important thing is that we talk to each other in an African language because, like I said before, it holds our worldviews and our worldviews is how we are as a people. What makes us, what informs the, our mannerisms, what informs um, our rituals, all of this is is, uh, is in the languages themselves. So it could be any language. It could be Yoruba, it could be Swahili, it could be any language, as long as it's, an, it's a language that is born of this continent. Mm -hmm. It holds our, our world views. Mfundo, you're a young person, and uh, as elders, we're busy preaching down to you, saying, ah, you must behave like this, this is your culture, this is your heritage. How are you embracing that, or should we be talking to you differently as young Africans? Um, I definitely think that there needs to be a change in conversation. Mm -hmm. I think so often young people are told that they need to embrace their heritage, they need to embrace their culture, but they're not told why. Why is it so critical that young people embrace their heritage and their culture? And it's, it, it goes more than about the fact that we need to be proud of ourselves as Africans. Sure, that is one tenet of it. But if we actually look at our quest, why we're here for Africa Month, the whole renewal of Africa, we have basically placed this burden on young people to carry the baton and run with it, to renew Africa, to renew its economy, to uh, take Africa to the world. And I think that it is impossible for us to do so in, for as long as young people Africans do not believe that they are just as capable as young Europeans, as young North Americans. I think that Prof, uh, Professor Wale, you once said, and I may be paraphrasing you, that an, 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 an affliction to one's community is an affliction to oneself. So in essence, if we do not groom young Africans to believe that as individuals, they are capable of innovating um, Africa and growing Africa, then why are we really talking about this whole renewal of Africa and growth of Africa? Okay, all right. Let's uh, start going to the floor, getting your questions, uh, starting with uh, Professor Mbele on table number two. Uh, if we could come to you. Table number two, Professor Mbele. Uh, okay. Everyone is here, and uh, I'd like to thank our minister who's really taking this forward. Um, we have a National Heritage Council that is really trying 
the best in order for us to know our history. I remember there's a, a, a phrase which I, when I, I lived in America, I taught it, uh, I lectured at the City University of New York. And one of the things that the students would just say, Professor, have you ever killed a lion in Africa? <laughs> then I'd say, yes, I've killed a lion and very soon I'll kill you. Because <laughs> <laughs> here am I so serious teaching about my continent you know, anthropology class, and they were asking me this question. But I saw later on that there is a problem because we are not positively portrayed. And this low self-esteem of Africans is not helping. So I'm just saying to all of us, it's a question now. What can we do as Africans to make sure that the young people are not lost? They don't glorify America, everything that is in America. Because even if I've lived there for 22 years, I've always fought for my country. Even wrote a book and said it's Lady Africa in America. And I said because they were so naive. But right now I just need to know what can we do? How can we document our history? How can we encourage all the young people? I do a project in schools called Campus After Hours. But we need help. All of us really should stand up. But how can we do that? Thank you. OK, thank you so much indeed. I'm going to take a couple at the, t at the same time. Hopefully, we'll get through uh, much more. But uh, that's noted. One of you can answer that. Uh, table number 11, uh, uh, Africa. Is this Maswangani? Table 11. Okay. Good morning, everyone. Uh, just to correct on my name is Adiki. Sorry? Adiki. Oh, okay. You write like a doctor. This is my country. I'd love to thank um, the minister and the team for the opportunity for us to come and be part of this uh, history in the making. Uh, actually, my, my question was that for us to build Africa. Unfortunately, as a musician, I will talk on the side of, of the music. If, if the media can feed the community with uh, the music that talks to the people, as in our African languages, that will be very much better. And the transformation itself, in the art and culture, it's, um, especially on the side of, of the gender side, females, it's, uh, I don't see it happening. Okay. And I think through, through female musicians as well, we could have a way of, of, of introducing this so that we can be able to introduce it to our youth, to conscientize them with the languages so that we bring up youth who are proud of who they are. Even the music itself, they must start composing in, 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 the, in our languages. Okay, thank so, you. Uh, uh, my question was that, transformation as a musician um, okay uh, I'd love to be answered on that especially right. on the gender of females okay fantastic yeah. we're gonna to have to take a quick break and when we come back we'll get those answers and start looking at tweets as well stay with us